Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that we got these awesome new Impulse shirts in. So if you'd like to support what I'm doing, uh, buying a t-shirt's a great way. This thing's entirely funded out of my pocket. So, uh, you know, your t-shirt sales help my bad decisions. And to everybody else who's already done it, thank you very much. I sincerely appreciate that. It really blows me away how many people are interested in what I'm doing here. So uh, stay tuned for the video. And if you make it all the way to the end, there's a special announcement. So let's get started. Well, the build continues. So, uh, got it flipped upside down and I'm starting to take a look at this bottom seam here and, uh, nothing too terrible. It's basically what I expected, but, um, here's the peel ply. If you remember way back to the fuselage molding video, I put the tapes in to create this little bit of joggle. There's a nice little step here. And then I put the peel ply down and, uh, as we peel it, you can see this is going to give me, ooh, it's so light. It's moving around there. That's going to give me a nice bondable surface. So I got to, I got to peel off both sides, but, um, so I'm going to do now is peel all those peel ply tapes. And then, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of sanding. There's just a, just an ever so slight ridge here in the middle. Nothing crazy, just a little tiny ridge. So I'll figure that a little bit. And then I'm going to run a couple layers of carbon all the way down and uh, get the bottom side all sealed up. So continuing on with the bottom seam here, I've got all the peel ply obviously pulled off and then I've sanded it a bit and um, it's it looks really nice. Um, there's a slight mismatch kind of through here, which is no big deal. That's where the wing is going to go. I'm going to cut that out anyway, but I'm still going to fix it. So what I've done is I've rolled on a layer of neat resin here and I'm getting ready to wet out some carbon in between plastic here. So that's two layers and it'll be uh, cut into four inch wide strips and then I'll come back here and I'll mix up some cabo and resin into a paste and I'll fill that center seam there and I'm not really trying to fill the seam so much as to fill any voids there so the carbon makes good contact between the right and left sides now again a large chunk of that is getting cut out so I'm not terribly worried about it but um, that's how I do it I never know exactly you know where I have to cut or what might show so I just fix everything and then whatever gets cut out well that's a bonus so I'm going to continue on with that. All right, you just saw me wet out some cloth. Got a little bit of filler along the seam, and I actually found a couple of low spots there, so I just threw some micro filler in there as well um, since I had extra. So that's all ready to go. So now I'm going to mark that out into some strips. I'll cut that up and then we'll come back and start putting them on the center line here. All right, peel plies all on. It's all rolled out nice. Everything went fine. That went good. Um, super easy. No issues there. So I am happy and we'll let that sit until tomorrow and then uh, we'll peel it off and uh, I'll probably start next on probably the stab leading edges where that's black there. Um, so I need to do that next. I'll probably do one of those per night. Um, so I'm gonna roll it maybe, hopefully on its side to make that level a little more easy to access. So uh, that's the next step. All right, there's the finished seam. It turned out really nice. I'm happy. It looks really nice all the way down. And the, you can see the edges here while I was working those. That's very nice. So minimal body work there. So next, I think I'm going to flip it over and start doing the leading edges of the stabs. All right, leading edges of the stabs are all done. And uh, I don't know if you can tell, but peel ply is on there. And, you know, boring, but uh, everything went well. The only thing I have left is I have one more seam down there on both sides of the stab. So I will flip it over in the morning, um, get that done up underneath there, and then I can start doing body work. So um, yeah, almost there. So you can see the top seam has all been sanded back. I haven't sanded the bottom yet. Um, I did sand a little bit up here in the front. So all pretty smooth, just needs a little bit of skim coat of body work. Sand it flat and uh, man, we'll be done. I guess done with all the structure of the fuselage. I still gotta do the the cowling lip and fit up the cowl and all that stuff, but that's coming slow but sure, one bite at a time. 
and the body work continues. So obviously it's flipped over and um, I've body worked the seam here and it's not perfect, but it's pretty close. But you gotta remember uh, from here to about here gets cut out for the wing. So I'm not particularly worried about that. And then whatever's left, I'll get a belly pan and that'll get body worked anyway. So again, just trying to get it done, get it into first primer. Um, I've also got the stabs all done. And uh, one thing that I did, and I didn't talk about it, but um, it had been bugging me for a while. I ended up cutting the lower stab skins off both sides. So you can see over there. Anyway, so what happened is when I closed them, the uh, splitter plates are so tight around here that it ended up being an interference fit and I didn't get the bottom skins closed all the way. Now, it was fine along the leading edge, but along the trailing edge, I didn't clamp it sufficiently and uh, it was a little bit thick. So I don't know if I can show you here, but uh, maybe you can see, but the trailing edge is, like here's a finished trailing edge. This is less than a 16th of an inch and it was about an eighth of an inch on the stabs and that just would, uh, well, frankly, it would piss me off and I would always know it's there and not be right. So I've cut those off. Um, I've still got to do a little sanding here, but I'm going to lay up new skins and I'll put those on outside the molds. So a little bit of a rework there, but no big deal. I could have left it and it would have been 100% structural, but I would have known it was there and it was going to bug me. Um, I've also got the tail um, closeout area trimmed. I've still got to put a lip in there as well. But um, all the body work on the bottom side is done. So um, you can sort of see here where these overlap joints were. I ended up skim coating the other side 100%. It's just quicker that way. It didn't need all that body work. It's really straight, but just cover the whole thing with a thin layer of skim, block it all back, one shot done. So I didn't do that here, but it's, it's straight enough to get into primer. So my goal is to get it all one color of primer and then do any last little bit of body work. So it's actually very straight. Um, I'll put it in primer and then block it so there won't be any ripples in it. And then I'll prime it and seal it again. Then it'll be ready for paint, but it's gonna sit in primer for quite a long time. So I wanna get all this covered up, get it one color, and then I can set it aside while I start to work on the wing. So I'm about to mix up some primer and I'm gonna put that on and then the bottom side will be done. And uh, I'll probably let that sit overnight and then I'll flip it tomorrow and do the same to the top side. All right, that's two heavy coats of primer on and it looks really good. I'm super happy. You can kind of look down it and see there's no big bumps, um, no ditches, no divots. It's all nice and smooth. And as I mentioned before, I roll primer on at this stage and I do that for a lot of reasons. One, it's quick and easy. But two, there's no masking, there's no overspray, and I can actually build film quicker with a roller than I can spraying. Plus, I don't have to get out my spray gun and I don't have to uh, clean it and all the stuff that goes along with that. So anyway, this all looks really good. I'm super happy. I've got a few little spots that need attention still, basically in the corner here. And you can see that, that seam there. I haven't worked that seam yet. I actually primered further than I probably should have, but I'll sand that back when I flip it over. And um, so for now, this is great. And I intend to put a really nice paint job on this. And I have an inflatable spray booth that I will use when it comes time to actually paint it. But for now, the roller is quick and dirty, um, quick and easy to clean up and uh, gets the job done quick. So there you go. All right, on to the next step. So the first thing I think I'm gonna tackle is where I put the dropout and the fuse uh, too far up and the canopy doesn't match. So I gotta make a little filler piece to fit in there. So what I've done, just taking the canopy mold, waxed up just the lip here. And you can, if we look in here, I've got resin in here already, but you might be able to see the trim line right there. So I only need to be about a quarter, I'm sorry, an inch and a quarter total. So I'm gonna put a couple pieces of fabric in there. I've got some fabric cut and we'll just do a simple wet layup, no vacuum or anything like that. And uh, we'll drop it in place. All right, I popped this little carbon part out of the mold and um, so what I've done is I've just taken a Sharpie and traced around the front edge of the canopy here. And then um, the lip at the front here, let's put that out. You can see I just marked the edge of the lip with tape and then transferred that over to this. I don't know if you can see the Sharpie mark there. Yeah, there it is. So I'll trim that back. And uh, all I gotta do is get it fit relatively close because I'm gonna body work it. 
and, uh, and I'll bond it in place and then I can start working this front seam. All right, got that trimmed and bonded in place and I used 30-minute um, epoxy with some micro filler just so I don't have to wait for it all day to dry so I can start body working this in an hour or so. In the meantime, I'm gonna start doing, working on the seam back here. So basically I'm just gonna spread filler in a thin layer where it needs it and then sand it all off. And my goal for today, hopefully, is to get the whole thing, top side anyway, in primer. So it doesn't seem like too daunting of a task. Um, I don't know if I'll get the canopy exact fit. I gotta make the lines nice and sharp, you know, around the canopy. Maybe, we'll see. Um, but yeah, going well. All right, cockpit filler pieces in and all body work. That's all real nice. So that's done. All the seams are done. I had a couple little uh, little voids right there, so I just filled those. All good. And seams are all done. And quite a bit of body work back here. This transition where the tail glues onto the fuselage um, took a little bit of work, but no big deal. A few hours with the sanding block and it's all good. So this is all now 100% ready to prime. And it's nice and straight too, which, you know, I keep saying that, but obviously that's the reason I spent time making the plugs straight and making molds so I could save on finishing work now. So I probably only have four hours total in uh, all of the body work on the seams and the fuselage. So that's, man, that's nothing. So all good there. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit the gaps on the canopy surround, and then I'm gonna fit the cowl. I was gonna go ahead and prime it, but that's dumb. I need to wait and get the lip done there and get the canopy surround fit and then I can prime it and uh, then I won't be doing work twice. So uh, that's next step. All right, I went around and sanded all the canopy edges uh, straight. It didn't take a whole lot. It was pretty straight anyway, but I just kind of cleaned them up, make sure the radiuses were what I wanted and um, Got that all set in place. Now, what I've done here is I've got um, flash breaker tape all the way around the edge and it's wrapped up underneath. So the, the very edge here is completely covered in flash breaker. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pot the canopy surround in place to the fuselage. So there's just a little tiny gap between here and here. And it's actually a pretty nice gap, but um, I want it perfect. So. I'm gonna mix up some micro and resin into a paste and I'm gonna push it all down to that slot all the way around here, all around the whole thing. And then once that cures, um, I will sand it back till it starts to cut into the flash breaker tape. Then I'll pop the canopy loose and I'll finish sanding it flush. And that'll give me an absolutely perfect fit for the canopy to the fuselage. At least that's my theory anyway. I suspect that I'm probably gonna have to leave a little bit of a gap just for things when they move and the hinge to close and things like that. But this is where I'm gonna start and then I'll clearance it. Um, I guess I'll clearance it later if I need to, but um, I'm gonna try to make it a perfect gap. So we'll see what happens. All right, so that's all there is to it. I just went around the whole canopy uh, with my piping bag. It's just a Ziploc with the um, corner cut off and squeezed it all the way around. And that's it. Now I just let it sit and then uh, more sanding. Yay. I ended up going back and hitting it with the Bondo spreader just to kind of flatten it out a little bit. That'll just save me a little bit of sanding. Uh, so all fared in real nice. It didn't take much filler at all. Um, I went a little crazy up there. I don't need all that. I just, it kind of built up and is what it is. So no big deal, it'll sand off. So that's it, let it dry, start sanding. All right, so I finished fitting the canopy, that's all good. I, I've got to peel that tape up there. That's just a little bit of uh, extra Bondo that'll come off uh, once the tape's off there. But you can look and see the gap is really nice. There's, there's actually no gap, it's completely sealed, which um, that won't work long-term. Uh, what I have to do is I'll have to sand the edge of the canopy back, you know, because paint and primer are gonna add a little bit of thickness in there and it won't fit correctly, so. Um, now that it's fit perfect, the lines are all straight, corners are all rounded, everything's good. I'll come back and sand the canopy back home, maybe a 16th, maybe just a 32nd of an inch. And that way when I primer it and paint it, it'll it'll seal back up tight. So pretty happy with that. <clears throat> Didn't take very long, just uh, you know, put it on, sand it off sort of thing. 
And in the meantime, I've transferred the, uh, the laser line from the inside to the outside. So we're good there. We got a nice straight line marked out. And I'm gonna start cutting the front of the cowling off. I'm sorry, front of the fuselage off so I can start fitting the cowling. So I'll grab my saw and we'll get going on that. Have the fuselage blocked up and leveled. So the bottom of the canopy rail is the level uh, datum of, for the fuselage. So I had to add a few blocks of wood underneath there and some foam, but that's all nice and level. And what I'm doing now is marking out the trim line for the canopy. So what's going on here is I have another laser in here. You can see that it rotates and it's currently uh, pretty close to marking the cut line where I need to square up the fuselage. So what I'm probably gonna do is run some masking tape around the inside of there and then mark it and then I'll come back and cut it and trim it up from there. So um, if you recall, I screwed up a little bit when I built the fuselage. You can see there's a nice lip here with a dropout forgot to do that on this side. So I'm gonna have to leave that lip and then come and cut this off flush. And then I'll add a lip from the inside. So that's currently where I'm at. I'm just uh, trying to get up enough guts to actually cut it here. I think it's pretty close, so we're in good shape. So I'm gonna mark it out and then uh, take one last look to make sure I'm good and we'll start cutting. All right, well, that's that. So now that that's cut off flush and square, I think my next steps are to temporarily um, mount the upper and the lower cowl together and get it cut so it's matched to that line, and then I'll start fitting everything. So uh, hang on while I figure out how I'm gonna do that. All right, so I've got the cowling dry fit together and um, Trimming the sides to get a nice mate was actually pretty easy because the edges of the mold really make the trim line. So the primer stops at the edge and if there's any carbon hanging out, you know, give me a nice easy line to trim. So um, I don't know if we can see in here, let me maybe flip it. Um, so you can see that there's a little bit of light shining through there, just a little bit of a gap, but again, it's just taped together. So I'm pretty happy with that fit. So that's good enough for the next step, which is gonna be I need to block the cowl up level, and I'm gonna use that same ring laser and shine a trim line in there. So I put parting lines in the plug, which made a line in the mold, which made a line on the part. So now I have a convenient way to start and line up my uh, trim lines. So by trimming it this way, they should be pretty close. And uh, from there, I'll install the cowl with some external, excuse me, external support and then I'll be able to uh, make the lip on the inside, you know, upper and lower individually. So, so far so good, we'll keep at it. All right, so I got the cowl fixtured in place. Uh, well, fixture, I say, just kind of set there and propped up. Um, I don't know if you can actually see the laser line there. So it's coming out of this, this level here and the split line is level on the plug. So now I know the cowl is square there. And on the inside, I've got the circular laser going, pointing down there to the middle of the cowl. And the laser, let's see if I can get it in here without bumping it, is completely level. Actually, it's slightly out. I'll fix that, but pretty close. And you can see it's projecting a line around the inside of the cowling. Now on the outside, here's the same split line that I trimmed the fuselage to. So I just cut a little slot there to indicate where that line is. And on the inside, you can just see that laser just touching that. So I think um, I'm ready to mark this and cut this. And uh, I'm going to go shut the light off real quick, uh, just so you can get a better idea of where the lasers are shining. So this gives a little bit better view of how I've squared everything up. So this is kind of the best way that I know how to do it. Um, when I laid out the plug, I did not get the cowl line completely vertical. So that's why I'm doing it this way and not using the marks in the part themselves. So again, I've trimmed the fuselage uh, completely flush at the front there and level. And now I'm taking it off the same point here as the reference. So I'm going to lay some tape in there and mark that and then get it cut. 
All right, so I got it cut, no drama there, and I've got it sort of just mocked in place. Now, you can see just sitting on the sawhorses there, if we zoom in on the line a little bit, it's not level, so I'm gonna have to raise the front of the cowl up a little bit. But the good news is, is the, uh, the cuts look flush, and it looks like it's gonna fit reasonably well. Now, the cowl's still flexible because there's no structure inside it, so um, I'm just happy that all the lines are at least starting to line up. Obviously, you can see there the cowl needs to come up a little bit. Looking good, so let's get it fixtured up in place and then I can worry about making the lip. So I'm happy with the rough fit, so I've gotten the cowl molds back out and I've waxed and PVA the lip on both of them. And this one's already got the cowl shell in the lower side. And I'm gonna put the upper shell in this side. Actually, maybe I can do it while you guys are watching here one-handed. See how nicely that fits back in there and the edges are flush with the flange. And I've put in one layer of 20 mil tape. You can see that right there. And uh, next I'm gonna bolt the two halves together and then I will lay up a flange on the inside here. So it'll stick to this part of the cowl, right? But where the tape is, it will not stick. And then when I separate them, that's gonna leave a little lip that I can bolt the upper and lower cowl together. So I decided to do this um, now should have done it a while ago, actually, so I'm kind of losing a day here. But by doing it this way, um, it'll hold the cowling in the correct shape for fitting up to the front of the fuselage. And uh, it makes just the whole thing a little bit stiffer, and I don't have to worry about trying to tape it together and being all janky like that. So let me get these things bolted together, and we'll start putting the carbon on the inside. All right, molds are clamped together and moved off the bench. And again, if you can look in here and see... You end up with a really nice fit. Um, so the seam is right here, and you can see there's almost zero gap. So what I'm gonna do is lay carbon up on this side. It'll overlap this side, and when I release, it leaves a lip, lets me put the upper and lower cowl together. Got some carbon cut on the table there. I'm gonna start wetting that out. That's three layers for those of you that are gonna ask. I don't know if that's enough, but I think it's enough. I can always add more if I have to, but that's where I'm gonna start. So. I'm gonna mix up some resin and uh, get that wet out. We'll cut that into strips and then we'll lay it into the molds. Well, as you probably saw on the time lapse there, um, that one was fighting me a bit. It kept falling down, which is, you know, unfortunately kind of expected. It's difficult working on a vertical wall there, but um, I had my son come out. We rotated the mold up on its side. He held it for me and uh, was able to make it worth both sides. So we're good there. Uh, just not very easy to record that, so I didn't. Now, I know some of you are wondering, why didn't you put the flange all the way up to the front? Well, the reason is uh, because the intakes are gonna be bonded into the lower cowl, lower cowl, but they'll actually be above the center line, the cut line up here on either side. So the cowl eventually is gonna get cut up and around and then down. So that's why I didn't do that. That'd just be making more work for myself. So really this is just to keep the two halves together while I'm fitting everything up and um, keep it square so it doesn't wanna pop apart. You know, having it taped together is you know a giant pain in the butt. So we're gonna let that cure and then I'll get on to uh, get it fit up on the front. So I think that's where we're going to end this video. And uh, not a bunch of obvious changes, but a bunch of tedious work. So I'm happy with all that. Uh, next episode, we're going to finish fitting up the cowling. We're going to get the whole thing in primer so it's one color. And we're probably going to um, get the little tail skid back there fit in. See, I've already got it cut away. but And the parts are made. I just have to, again, put a joggle there. So Thanks everybody for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Until next time, I'm out.
All right, everybody, thank you for sticking around to the end. I guess you made it. So big news. Um, as you know, I've been really cranking hard on this thing for the last several months, really, and making a lot of progress, uh, really taking a lot of time away from my family and other things I should be doing. But that's because um, Impulse will be on display at the National Championship races this coming September up at Reno. So uh, if you want to see it in person, man, I would love it if you stop by and take a look. It'll be in the IF1 organization booth right in the IF1 pits. So come on by, take a close look at it. Uh, I'll tell you all the stuff that I did wrong and the stuff I would do better next time. And if you don't mind, um, I would love a like and a subscribe to the channel. And if you can manage a comment, I try to answer every one of them. I love it when people ask questions. Uh, that's really why I'm doing this is to kind of show everybody that this isn't really black magic, that it can be done, especially on a low tech scale. You can really make a pretty nice high tech product. So again, I'm just doing this in my garage. Model airplane techniques here, nothing really special. And if I can share you know, some little tip or trick or show somebody how to do it, man, I'm all for it. I think that's great. So again, um, really stoked to be at Reno. Uh, my dream was to race there, obviously not going to happen. So this is the next best thing. So come on by, say hi, and uh, shoot the breeze for a while. I'd really appreciate it. See you guys later.